Hi, this is Dr. Eric Westman with Adapt Your Life and Ask Adapt. And today we're going to be talking about type 2 diabetes, elevated blood sugars, keto, the ADAPT program, LCHF. What about those pesky blood sugars? That's really the topic. And the theme, um, just because I'm wearing a jersey of a football player doesn't mean I know how to play football. Okay, so just because the blood sugar is high, it doesn't mean you have diabetes. That's the point. I'll get back to that in a minute. Linda says, what do you do if your doctor is reluctant to adjust medication uh, to, in response to improved biomarkers? Well, uh, you may have to inform your doctor and help the doctor understand that it is possible to get off medications. Often doctors have never seen that. And so you can politely monitor whatever is going on, the blood pressure, the blood sugars, the cholesterol, and then advise or, or um, uh, recommend they change it. But on the other hand, isn't the doctor really just an advisor to you? Uh, that's always been my feeling is that I advise my patient. I don't tell them necessarily what to do. Um, also, what is your opinion about prescribing lisinopril or normotensive type 2 di for normotensive type 2 di people with type 2 diabetes? who are controlled by keto, well, this gets into the, uh, to prevent complications. So there's some medicines that are given to people with diabetes to prevent kidney disease, prevent other things down the road if they have diabetes. So here, let's get into what is diabetes. And diabetes is an elevated blood glucose, elevated blood sugar all day long um, when you're eating carbohydrates. So remember the definitions have all been developed with people who are eating lots of carbohydrates, which means they burn lots of carbohydrates. So it is possible actually to fix your diabetes, contrary to what a lot of doctors have been taught or what they've seen, because they haven't seen anyone who doesn't eat carbohydrates. So you have to be a little bit tolerant of that. Um, teach people if you want, but you don't have to. Um, so I would say uh, you can fix the diabetes. If you don't have diabetes, you don't need a medicine to prevent the complications of diabetes that you don't have anymore. So you don't need the lisinopril when you don't have diabetes anymore. Um, Allison asks, should a pre-diabetic do intermediate fasting? I think you mean intermittent fasting. I don't know. So this is one of those areas in the future for solid, more detailed science. 100 years ago, intermittent fasting, total fasting, low-carb diets is what doctors used for diabetes. So it's been used before. What we're quibbling about is whether it's the safest way to fix things. Um, Sue asks, uh, can eating low-carb or keto cause diabetes? That's a good question. And this gets to my jersey. I'm not a football player, although I look like one. Well. Okay, I don't, but um, so diabetes is actually a situation internally where not only the blood sugar is high, but the insulin, is, so I'm talking about type two, the insulin is high in response to try to keep the blood glucose, blood sugar low, and you're burning all of these carbs in your cells, so the intracellular machinery is getting clogged by the sugar burning, the glucose burning. So just the, the blood sugar does not equal, is not equivalent to having diabetes. Wearing a jersey doesn't mean I'm a football player. Okay, I've worn out that metaphor. Barbara asks, how do you know if you are pre-diabetic? Well, that's the blood sugar reading. There are normal ranges, in quote, pre-diabetic ranges based on people who eat carbohydrates. And that's the, the, what the lab test is gonna show. Um, you have to be careful comparing your, your non-carb eating, carb burning body, so your fat eating, fat burning body uh, normal ranges or the values you have, careful, it doesn't necessarily reflect what a carb eater and carb burner. So all of the labs that have been developed as normal reflect people who have been eating and burning carbohydrates. Now there's some labs that I wouldn't want abnormal even if you were not eating carbs like uh, sodium for example or potassium, although even then uh, uh, that might not be the same normal range. Um, if I go low carb, Ted asks, if I go low carb, can I reverse type 2 diabetes? Absolutely. Uh, it may take time. For some people, it happens in one day. Be careful with medicines that lower the blood sugar. It can happen fast. It might take one year. I follow some people who've had diabetes for 20 years. After two years, they still have high blood sugars. They feel a lot better. They're losing weight. 
one fella I can remember still is 100 pounds to lose. So remember, again, if you're comparing your situation to what someone else's situation is, it may be very different. Mark asks, why does that the Diabetic Association recommend eating carbs every day if it's so harmful? Great question. Write him a letter, ask him, <laughs> um, and tell them that it's not the only way to do it. From my view, it's because doctors put people on blood sugars, uh, blood sugar medicine that can make the blood sugar go low, risking a low blood sugar. The diabetic educating uh, nutrition folks teach eating and feeding carbs to prevent hypoglycemia because of the medication. So the medications are what cause the low blood sugars, not the diabetes. So what we do is we take control of the diabetes medicine and the carbohydrates in the food at the same time, reduce them safely at the same time. And write them a letter, uh, write your congressman. Actually, um, it's complicated. Um, the Nutrition Coalition that Nina Teicholz has created and uh, Sarah Hallberg, they're both part of that. Call them up, join it, it's a grassroots change. Terry says, I was recently diagnosed with type two diabetes. What are the biggest risks I face? Well, you don't wanna have it, that's for sure. Um, if diet and weight loss can help, um, that, you know, that should be the path to go down, not going on a medication that can actually worsen the weight, which is a cause of the insulin resistance, which is a cause of the elevated blood sugar and diabetes. So in my clinic, it really takes two things, changing the food and lowering the weight if someone has extra body weight because the weight contributes to the diabetes too. Ray says, if I embark on this lifestyle, the ADAPT program or keto, uh, will I be able to get off my medication? Well, absolutely. Um, it's very possible, very likely. Uh, be careful, uh, do it with someone who understands how to do it. Um, or if you understand how to do it yourself, when the normal, low normal range happens, then you have to taper back on the diabetes or blood pressure or heartburn or arthritis or all of those medications. Um, Debbie says, I wake up with very high blood sugar readings and it seems to go down as the day goes on. Is this an indication of type two diabetes? If you're keto, if you're on the ADAPT program, if you're a fat burner, it's very common for the first blood sugar in the morning to be elevated. That's because of the cortisol rise in the morning known as the dawn phenomenon. And it doesn't mean you have diabetes or prediabetes. Um, this year I went to a lot of keto conferences and was uh, taught by someone who's measures blood sugars uh, religiously. He's an engineer and he said, just do 10 jumping jacks in the morning before you measure your blood sugar, it'll come down, it'll reassure you. So remember, an elevated blood sugar does not mean you have diabetes. Um, that's it for today. Thanks for your questions. Uh, please put your comments, suggestions below. Um, Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on further episodes, and um, I hope that's helpful.